I got an interesting question recently from one of my subscribers. He said, how can I preach with authority? He went on to say that he felt like when he gets up to preach, he doesn't have the authority, he doesn't have the kind of presence that it takes to really capture an audience and be an authority in their lives, which can sound bad on its surface. But if you think about it, when we think about authority, there's negative connotations, like if somebody's being an authoritarian, that's not good. But the word author comes from the root word of authority, like authority and author basically mean the same thing. So when you think about someone who has authored the book, you might say they're the authority on that subject. So when we preach and we seek to preach with authority, that might be kind of where that's coming from. Like how can we, when we get up in the pulpit, when we stand up on the stage, be seen as someone who knows what they're talking about and is speaking truth from God. That's what we want to tackle in this video today because if you're going to communicate, there's all kinds of ways to do it. We want to build tension. We want to kind of woo people. So there's all kinds of communication principles that come into play. But one of the things that all of us want at the end of the day is to be able to preach with authority, to have a sense of presence that people look to, not because of us, but because of how God is working through us. So we're gonna tackle that in today's video. Let's go ahead and get started. My name is Lane, this is Preaching Donkey. It's so awesome to have you joining me today. I wanna to put something free in your hands. If you go to preachingdonkey.com slash 21 days, you can pick up my free 21 day guide to creating killer sermons. It's just a three week, three step process so it will walk you through how to create, study, prepare and deliver a really powerful message. So go ahead and check that out. It's my gift to you. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. It really helps for YouTube to shine favorably upon me and share this video with more people, which is what I really want. I want more pastors to be able to see these videos and I want this channel to grow so that our community grows of people who believe that the message we have, it's the most important message in the world. We wanna make sure that it's heard. So when it comes to preaching with authority, there are challenges. There are challenges that go along with this that kind of keep us from being able to have that authority that we want. The first challenge is that authority is abused. So some of us actually avoid the, the whole concept of preaching with authority because of how we have seen authority abused by people in the past. Uh, I, I come from churches, when I was very young, I went to churches that tended to have very authoritative lead pastors or very authoritative pastors. And really, it kind of drifted into authoritarianism. Uh, where it was somebody who just wanted to control us, that wanted to control the church, wanted to tell you what to wear and what to think and how to behave and what to say and what not to say and all of those things that you really don't find in the New Testament, but those pastors kind of loved that sense of I'm in control. And so for some of us who may have grown up that way or been around people like that, it's almost like we want to differentiate ourselves from that culture. We want to say, hey, listen, I'm not trying to control you. That's not, that's not what I do. The Holy Spirit is the one who leads and guides us. I'm merely a messenger of what God has to say. And so this isn't about me controlling your behavior and just forcing you into action. Uh, it, it's me presenting to you what the Word of God says and giving you the opportunity to respond to the Word of God by submitting yourself to Christ because He is the one who is in control. He is the ultimate authority. So sometimes we balk authority because of how it's been abused and we don't want to be put into that same category. The other reason why authoritative preaching is problematic is because culturally we balk authority. I mean, we don't want to be told what to do, right? And so we think, well, if I preach with authority, people are going to reject it, right? They're, they're, they're going to walk away from it. And I think that's a misnomer because authoritative preaching doesn't mean forceful preaching. It doesn't mean bossy preaching. Your authority doesn't come from your, the force of your personality. We're going to see later in this video where your authority comes from. So when we shy away from authoritative preaching because people don't respond well to authority, I think we're misunderstanding where authority comes from. And the third reason why we might struggle preaching with authority is we know our own 
faults. We know our flaws. And so when we stand up in the pulpit, we think, well, gosh, I'm failing in this area. I'm not submitted to Christ in this area. He's still working on me in this area. I just had a fight with my spouse. I just yelled at my kids. I'm not perfect. And I'm supposed to stand up here and tell all these people how to live and be the authority. And I think sometimes it's easier to shy away from that because we don't think we measure up. And so because of all these things, uh, preaching with authority can be somewhat challenging because of even stuff that's going on inside of us where we just say, ah, I don't know. I want to show you though three things that you can do to kind of flex this muscle in the right way and preach with authority in a way that's productive and reaches the kind of goals that you want. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to preach the word. And this is super simple. This is what Paul told Timothy to do. In fact, let's read that together. In 2 Timothy 4, Paul says to Timothy, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and teaching. Paul says, preach the word. And it's interesting that he says in season and out of season. In other words, when, it's, when it feels right and good and when it doesn't. When you feel up to it and you're energetic about it and when you don't. When you feel like you measure up and when you don't feel like you measure up. I kind of think of it like this. I go to the gym every morning. I get up at 5.15 and I'm at the gym by 5.30. And I'm trying to move that up. I'm trying to get up at 5 and be there by 5.15. But I go every single morning and I work out. And I do what my app says to do. I use an app called FitBod. And it tells me every day what to do. It's a set of exercises, a set of uh, weight training exercises. I work out every day in season and out of season. If I feel like it and I'm strong and if I don't. As of right now, today, as I record this, this morning, I wasn't feeling it. I, I didn't feel the workout. It just wasn't coming together. But guess what? I still showed up. I still did every set. I still did every rep. I still gave it everything I had. It wasn't the most amazing, breaking records, setting personal records, none of that, but I did it, I showed up. Preaching the word is the same way. You preach the word in season and out of season. And then he says, correct, rebuke, and encourage with all great patience and teaching. So again, this is authoritative preaching, but it's rooted in the word, whether you feel like it or not. So it's in the word and you're rebuking and correcting and training because you're preaching the word, you're not preaching your ideas. If that's going to happen, the second thing that has to happen is you have to know the word. So you preach the word, but you got to know the word. When you, if you want to preach with authority, you got to step up to the pulpit, step onto the stage, knowing your text, knowing the passage, preaching with authority in a way that shows, that demonstrates that it's not about you and your life, although that is important and you do have to show what it looks like and people have to believe you. That's where you get the ethos, the trustworthiness as a pastor, as a preacher. But ultimately, you're not preaching your life you're preaching the word, you're preaching the life of Christ, you're preaching the scripture. And so to do that, you must know the word. And so many pastors want to preach with authority and yet don't spend the time necessary to really understand what they're preaching. You should know 90% more than you actually preach. In other words, when you gather all your material and you've studied for a sermon, you should only use 10 to 20% or 30% of what you've actually studied. And the other 70, 80, 90% isn't wasted. It's just in your arsenal. It's what brings your authority with you. So that when you preach, it's not like you're trying to get water out of a dry well. You have this spring of, of knowledge and, and water, life, and out of that abundance, you're preaching. That's the way authority is communicated. When you're preaching the word out of a deep, knowledge, not just that you you know it because you studied it, but you're, you've lived it and it's part of you in season and out of season. You know the word. To help with this, I think it's helpful to really understand when you study for a sermon, don't immediately go straight to commentaries. This is especially the case with newer preachers, but I've even seen very experienced preachers where this is what they'll do. They will get a passage that, like, let's say they're preaching through a series and there's a certain sermon coming up and it's going to be through this passage. Well, rather than studying that passage, 
they'll go straight to commentaries or modern day commentaries, which are just other people's sermons, because you can watch anybody's sermon from any church, anytime. And so they'll go to somebody else's sermon and read that first, or go to a commentary and read that first before they've actually had time in the word themselves to truly understand it. And, and one of the best ways to do this, if you're new to studying the Bible for a message, one of the best ways is a method that has been outlined by a few different people, but one of my favorites is in the book, Living by the Book by Howard Hendricks. It's three steps, observation, interpretation, application. Observation, you look at the text and you're just asking, what do I see? Okay, what does it say? Not, I'm not worried about what it means. I'm not worried about anything. I just wanna see what are the actual words. So many people skip this where they barely even gloss over it and they move on to trying to understand it. Doesn't make sense. You have to know what it says first. Interpretation is the second step, which is what does it mean? What does it mean? So now that I know what it says, what does it mean? This is when I start to consult commentaries, Bible dictionaries. I start to look at the historical context, the biblical context, because I want to know what does this thing mean? And then application, how does it work? How does it work? How does one apply it? What does it look like if it were to take on flesh and blood and be lived out? And if you make a regular practice of studying using that method, then you can really do some damage. Uh, in my 21 day guide, which I talked about, one of the things that I send you when you get the 21 day guide is I actually send you a bonus guide, which is my ultimate Bible study guide for message prep, where I outline this exact process with things to do. So definitely go to preachingdonkey.com slash 21 days to pick th those two things up. And then finally, number three, and this is huge, you gotta steward your calling. What do I mean? I mean that you have a calling to preach. And you have to steward, you have to manage that calling. You have to pour into it, you have to invest in it. That's one of the reasons why on this channel, every single week, I'm bringing you new content to encourage you, to help you with sermon prep, to help you with sermon delivery, to, to draw out lessons for pastors from different things going on in the church leadership world. The reason why I do that is because if you're gonna steward your calling, and be able to preach with authority and be able to lead with authority. It has to come from a place where you have worked on yourself, that you've brought the best of what you have. If you're preaching the word and you know the word and you're bringing the best of what you have and you're stewarding your calling, well then guess what? Over time, that squeamishness that we might have around authority, that sense of, oh, I don't know if I wanna preach with authority, that kind of fades away and what replaces it is a strong, confidence, not in yourself and your authority, but in God's and in God's word. And that's what I want for you. I want, I want that for you. I want that for your preaching ministry. I think that's what makes all of it come together. And the reason why this is so important, again, is because we have the most important message in the world, the gospel. And we want to make sure it's heard. We want to make sure that it's responded to. We want to make sure that it's received well. So that's my hope for you. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. Definitely leave me a comment below. Let me know how have you struggled with this issue of preaching with authority? Does it come naturally to you? Or is it something that you have to, you still need to work on? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear that from you. Be sure to give this video a like, share it with a friend, share it with a pastor friend, spread the word, and I will see you in the next video.